Hello, y'all. Happy New Year's Eve. Let me darn go on. Make sure to lotion my hands real quick so I don't come up on here ashy. Um, this is the last video of the year. Actually, in more ways than one, this is my last video recording of 2021. And, you know, probably won't be available for y'all. Well, yeah, I'm definitely ain't uploading today because my upload schedule on my business channel is 12 o'clock in the afternoons. But we have a lot to discuss, y'all. So, I have successfully managed to complete peak. Y'all know peak is between November uh, 21st to December 26th. So, I have successfully completed my first ever peak with Nurgle on Amazon. Surprisingly, it wasn't as hectic as I was thinking it was. It, it was, but it wasn't at the same time. Um, because of the fact that we could have worked upwards of 60 hours. We could have been forced to do mandatory overtime. But it was so little work to do. Even though the work that we did have was aggravating and stressful. Um... I never went above 40 hours. The most that I've done was 36 hour work week. So, and then we got down to working as low as 20, I think 26 hours was my current work schedule that I had right now. And even now that I've done a done two shift bids because we do our shift bids three weeks out in advance. I just did my shift bid today. Um, for my schedule starting all the way in the third week of January. That's how far out the shift bid is. It's the end of December. And I've already done my shift bid for the um, end of January. And I'm about to start my shift bid this Monday. I mean, I'm about to start my new shift that I put in three weeks ago. Um, that's coming up. So, yeah. Interesting experience, nonetheless. Um quite a few return calls uh, which wasn't difficult for me the only issue is is the gifts what I can't stand is it, it's not a better process on returning gifts because the customer has to, we have to authenticate the gift recipient you know the gift givers account and then what if the darn on person don't know the darn on person's account number and then what if they wasn't provided with the darn on stuff the order ID because we can go around it like we can search the order ID in the system and find a gift account and try to verify it this that and the third um but yeah that that was my hardest right there is doing gift returns because I feel like that should be a whole additional training on that we were not taught fully enough about how to do situations like that um and then they only taught us in training about how the gift recipient can um get the um refund without the customer being notified but what happens when the gift re the gift giver calls and requests a refund on behalf of the gift recipient like they don't tell us how to do the shit in the reverse um but it's easy enough to learn it, it, because it's like the orders underneath their account under their card but then this is where it gets even more tricky what if the gift recipient wants the refund to go back to the darn on customer? Like, stuff like this is where we need to darn on learn stuff about. Another thing I want them to teach us about is these darn on gift cards, these darn on um, paper gift cards, which one is the order ID and all this, that, and the third. That was confusing the hell out of me because I'm so used to either a physical gift card or a digital email card. I'm not used to the cardboard darn on copy card. This is my first time ever doing Amazon. Then, of course, can't reach out to nobody in regards to this. They sending you to a darn on uh, uh, article to pull up, but it's like, okay, the article does not mention nothing about what the specific question that I'm trying to act, get answered. <sighs> so that was confusing as hell. Then was the disrespectful phone call. The phone, and I mean, it, it, it was just sending me through the roof, honey. The Christmas ones was throwing me worse off than the darn on Thanksgiving. I don't think I got it bad on Thanksgiving. You know, with Black Friday, but Christmas time, oh, the, 
And you know, understandably, I, I felt bad for some folks. Like, some folks had their cards, you know, stolen. Some people were on the verge of homelessness. And they got a gift. One person had a gift from the church. And this is why they were so upset. Because it was like, the stuff wasn't going to arrive on time. And we was having a hard time processing a refund in a timely manner. Oh, no. The only thing we could process was a refund. But the problem is she felt like she was doing the church wrong because it was like, well, they gave me this for my children and the only thing you can do is give me a refund. It feels like I'm cheating the church. But we telling her you can use the funds to darn gonna repurchase the item. She didn't feel like that was doing good. She thought we was darn gonna screw in the church over. So I had calls like that. Surprisingly enough, people got on the phone prank calling I don't been called the N word another time. Well, at least this time it was by a black person. First time, y'all know I got called a nigga bitch <laughs> by old country fam. <laughs> you know? So, first time I got called the old nigga bitch, like, oh, I, they done got me old nigga bitch on the phone. <laughs> they hung up the phone. I was like, shit, thank you. I actually appreciate you better than the darn on Mexican that darn on held up my call handle time. Because, you know, unless the customer is being overly disrespectful, we can't hang up the phone. So, I appreciated the nigga bitch call that hung up within two minutes. Uh, no, actually, not even two minutes. One minute. I was like, child, little dude, he know this darn gonna really help the call handle time. That last phone call that lasted a half hour. That one minute phone call dropped that average call handle down all the way to 15 minutes. <laughs> okay? And then, since you call me old, uh, you know, the N word, I don't, I can darn on suppress the HMD. I don't even have to le let you do a survey so you don't even affect my metrics. This is the metrics. Woo! This is the metrics. Honey, you ain't even affecting my metrics except for darn on bringing down that call handle time. Come on through, honey. This darn old queen done got the last laugh. This darn old beautiful melanated nigga got the last laugh on that one. So, honey, I don't be darn on stressing out when the folk call themselves cuss me out. Oh, especially the ones that think they're going to get an extra concession out of me. I be looking through the phone like, <laughs> little dude, you know, you heard your bitch was looking at me? Here I go, here. Honey, you darn gonna coming at me with that energy. I'm giving you that energy right on back with some positivity, a positive no. I demand you come give me this, that, and the third. Honey, if it's not within this darn on article workflow, anything uh, above and beyond, that's at my discretion. It is my discretion. Y'all gonna learn to treat y'all customer service agents right on the phone. Y'all gonna learn today. Talking about you demand I put an extra ten dollars for the inconvenience. I'm I'm looking up. Sometimes I do have to. Like if it's a shipping, I, oh that's mandatory. I got the darn gonna compensate you for you know it not arriving in a timely manner for the. But anything above that, oh no, honey, is at my discretion. I've given people quite a, quite a. a it's been plenty of darn going um. Stuff that I done or done where I went above and beyond. Like, for items that were returnable, I darn going, you know, the customer, oh, I hear that they're a little bit older. Or they got some children. Or they tell me something like the nearest post I was over 20 miles away. Honey, I go ahead and stretch it in a way where, honey, we don't even have to return the item. You still get a refund. But, honey, you come at me on the phone with disrespect, bitch. You might as well gas that car on up and travel 50 old miles. Because you returning the product of the day. You returning the product of the day. UPS ain't able to pick it up on... Okay. <laughs> Put old nasty retro charge on your dog on my hand. And once again, it's little stuff like that that uh, I can do. It all depends on you. You better treat your customer service agent right. And that includes the foreigners too. Now, I understand some of the foreigners... They be messing up and stuff. But it's like, this is also what was irritating me. Can y'all please let the foreigners authenticate y'all account? Before they're going to transfer, for them to transfer you over. Because do you not know how stressful it is for me to darn going um, to ask for your information? 
And then you want to go a mile a minute. And I was like, well, honey, I'm American. I can't even understand you. How the hell you expect Mr. L uh, Mr. L uh, Chong and Miss Ling and uh, Miss Wu Sai and everything else to understand you? No offense to my Asian folks, but it's like my Southern behind can't understand you going 20 miles per hour. No one G at the gmail.com. Uh, slow it down. And then you say, I done repeated it three times. Well, you going to repeat it the fourth time with me, honey. We, we'll sit here all day. And then sometimes I try to just pull up the darn on name with the phone. It's so easy with the phone numbers because I can darn gonna type in the phone numbers. But some of y'all be having these darn on complex names. Both my white and black people be having these complex names. And you think somebody posted and naturally understood what you said. Marquita. Uh... Gertrude uh, Hermeshaw, uh, the Spanish folks, darn one, uh, Juanita. You know, these are not actual people names. I'm just making up. I'm just, well, they are people names, but these are not actual customers. I don't want nobody thinking I'm violating the darn going, you know, privacy or whatnot. So I'm just throwing out some random names. Um, Juanita Vasquez. It's like, how you spell Vasquez, honey? I, I don't care how I spell Juanita, honey. And then you say Juan, and it can be spelled multiple ways. You say Blair. And, you, like, that's another thing, too. If you have a name that you know can be spelled multiple ways, and I accidentally spelled it the wrong way, don't get sassy with me. Like, I had a Blair on the line. That's talking about, oh, well, did you go to school? Do you know grandma? Are you, are you dyslexic? And I was, and I darn gonna say, uh, well, ma'am, dyslexia don't have, and you know, we're supposed not to go get combative with the customer, but this one darn gonna really got me talking about, am I dyslexic? And I'm trying to feel like, isn't dyslexic like a, a, a seeing disorder where you see things in the reverse? It's like, I'm not able to see your information. I need to pull up your information to authenticate your account. What, even if I was dyslexic, what does that have to do with the way that I'm hearing? You can say I might have a hearing problem, but hearing is not darn going compact. It's not synonymous with being dyslexic. So it's like you trying to insult somebody on this phone, and your insults is not even landing right, boo boo. Talking about you have an a English degree. It's like obviously your English degree that is not darn going compatible with you darn going throwing out the proper insults. You got all that darn going background and darn going English. And don't know the difference between dyslexia and somebody having a hearing problem. And then it's neither one that applies because you the one darn gonna speak it too fast on this darn gonna phone. And we could have avoided this if you would have darn gonna took the time to authenticate the account with the foreigner instead of being xenophobic and talking about, oh, I just want to speak to American off the bat. Now, sometimes I understand if you darn gonna gave them a chance and they just doing too much, you even because I've had customers at least give the Asian folks a chance, and then the Asian folks end up fucking up their account. I had one person today, a fellow sister, and I and I couldn't blame them. Darn gone, actually it was two. One person, it was an older lady around seventy something. The darn gone Asian person talking about there's a, a book charge on her darn gone account, and she's going to get charged for it. Also, she she has to pay for these darn on four items of Tahitian juice or something. It was some sort of organic juice, something that she had. But she had shipments of she supposed to get one shipment a month of four for a hundred and thirty some dollars, right? Instead, she darn gonna get four shipments of all four of them for sixteen, and she had a pending charge of five hundred some dollars. Customer tells me she's on Social Security. Honey, over half her check about to get snatched behind the darn gone juice. Obviously, the Asian person can't understand the frustration. And and then worse, you making the situation worse instead of empathizing with the customer, instead of trying to look into the situation. You talking about you, she's forced to darn gone do this and, t and lie and tell her that she has an extra item on her darn gone account. Now she's thinking her account is darn gone compromised. Now I got to get on, now you transfer her to me, and I got to darn gonna calm her down and inform her that, you know, maybe the other customer was looking at multiple accounts or whatnot, even though customer service agents, we are not the chat folks, honey. 
we do not darn gonna have multiple accounts at the same time. But you know, I'm still not trying to throw my other colleague under the damn bus. Even though they done gave me this client with this situation and you done made the situation worse, I'm still darn gonna try to uphold your integrity. But anyways, yeah, I, I sure declined that the darn gonna book wasn't on her account. I darn gonna went and canceled out the subscribe and save. I done told her how to resubscribe and darn gonna put the correct item on. I also darn going, you know, canceled out the actual order because once you can cancel out the subscribe and save and the, the current order can still be going through. So you got to make sure both the can the shipment is canceled and the darn gonna subscribe and save so she don't keep getting mischarged. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> so had that situation I dealt with. What else have I done that was rather complex? Oh, honey, it was one customer that had they, her items was delivered to the complete wrong address, delivered to the darn on church. None of her items came in time for Chris. It was coming in time for Christmas. I stood on, I stayed on the phone with her for 50 some minutes as she walked across and knocked on every one of her darn on neighbors' doors. I conversed with her. I was looking up the items and stuff. Uh, upon the customer on the bus in New York, this is what dreams are made of, honey. But this wasn't no good dream of her to have to experience this darn on items missing near Christmas. One that I had to deal with today. Oh no, yesterday. Very complex. They ordered a couple items got sent to the wrong address they sent those items back they repurchased the items they didn't put in for a replacement and then the replacement items inadvertently seemed to have gotten cancelled but the ones that they sent back wasn't showing up as cancelled so and then they still didn't get part of the order it was a massive order both times they ordered it but the ones that they sent back were still showing up as if they had the item. And then the new order, the replacement order, didn't show up at uh uh didn't show up at all. So now the customers ask how. And then make it even worse, the orders was done in such a way where some of the items were refunded, and I couldn't go back and refund the remaining items as missing because it was trying to force me to say the entire package there was only part of the item that arrived because if it's like if you don't refund the entire shipment if you try to say entire item missing but one item is refund like it just creates a whole habit situation honey even the darn on uh specialist that i got on the line it darn gonna confuse the hell out of them for a minute well, I had the darn gonna go into darn on details about this darn on order. Just darn on explaining the shit has me darn on with it. Imagine being on the phone call and Lord bless their heart, I was on the phone call with for them like forty some minutes. Another thing I was not prepared for, they did not tell us about vouchers. We learned about how to uh, sign people up for discounted prime with food stamps, how people can use food stamps, um, but they ain't tell us nothing about health insurance vouchers. Not to be confused with WIC, because when she was saying voucher, honey, you know my ass from the hood. I was thinking, oh, Lord, they darn on, oh, they darn on Amazon getting all the darn on money. Hey, they, they accept the WIC up on here, too? I'm glad I didn't assume that. I darn gonna had the customer elaborate on what vouchers meant, you know, using context clues because I'm searching. I can't find no article on what to do in regards to a voucher. This is one of the situations where actually searching on Amazon was better than actually searching through the uh through our proprietary search tool. One of my colleagues was able to pull up the uh info on the actual website about vouchers. I was like, ain't this about a blimp? Why we don't have an article dealing with this? In details explaining about the uh what to do with a voucher it took me over 30 some minutes to do this because i couldn't reach out to ma my manager was gone for the day i'm not able to pull up no article everybody else is stuck on phone calls i'm i'm being real with the customer i was like ma'am it's going to take me some time <laughs> to look this up and then it's like 
it ain't all all these different departments we have. We have over eight different departments just for darn going um for Alexa alone. And that shit pissed me the hell off. Because I'm thinking Alexa is just one transfer that they service all of them. Honey, I end up darn on getting bounced around one day about four different times because I was in the wrong Alexa department. Because my ass, you know, I heard that the person had tech issues. I was like, oh, this is Alexa. Oh, no, this person needs to go over here. Oh, Lord, now I can't even find the thing because, once again, we don't have no simple darn on pull down that shows everything. You type it in, it's not in one set. You got to go out, go to a whole different category. It's over darn on 500 different darn on outbound links that we have to go through. I wish they get that shit under control as well. I wish it, it's a way where you can just type it in and it would just pull up everything categorized without you having to go out, go in, and go on a scavenger hunt trying to search for the darn on outbound link. Also, if the customer wants to call that department directly and save you time of having to go through the stress of it all, I wish we had a direct Dargon link, uh, uh, you know, extension number to Dargon give to the customer and say, okay, when you call the customer service number, um, press this extension and it will send you to this particular Dargon department. I guess they don't have that because we have 500 departments, but honey, what's stopping the Dargon extension from being from one all the way to 500, in my humble opinion? That's another thing they need to do. When the folks call in through the app or through the phone and they and they know which department they need to get to, stop sending us, because once again, that, that would Dargon reduce the Dargon transfer rate astronomically for the customer service agent. If the Dargon uh, the customer knows that they have to go to a specific department that customer service cannot help them. Because customer service is not tech support. I do not darn on assist with your darn on fire TV. Unless your uh, TV is lost in transit. Unless you need to put in for a replacement. But any tech issues that you have, that is not me, honey. So, yeah, I wish they would get that together. Oh! Here I call myself being comfortable. Nearly knocked y'all down, honey. But yeah, had to deal with that. Uh, what other issues I had to deal with? Oh, the other day, honey, I don't know if there's a darn on flag up on me, honey. I don't know if they said, oh, this country bama bitch be going too much in detail. I be putting a darn on customer, fellow customer service agent in a faraway state. Because I call myself being a little bit too descriptive. Honey, I got hung up on like five different times and I had the customer waiting for like a half hour because each time it took me like two, three minutes to even get through to somebody. And then some calls were immediately nobody wasn't picking up. So I had to drop the call and answer again. Then uh, I'm explaining the situation. The customer, the agent hangs up on me. And I was like, wait a minute now. I know this is a valid transfer. Why is the folks hanging up on me? Am I saying something wrong? I'm darn gonna be in professional. I'm explaining everything in detail. Then I got to the point of thinking like, well, shit, maybe, well, maybe you darn gonna explain the shit a little bit too much. But see, certain stuff be so complex that I don't have no choice but to elaborate and give the customer service agent a little bit more context. Uh, if it's something as simple that's like a uh, Casey, you know, that I'm unable to do, I can darn gonna paraphrase it on down. Cause once again, I'm not trying to have my call handle time up to darn on 15, 20 minutes. So when I'm going in detail about the darn on issue, please don't think because it's Diva Wan had the gift of gab. Trust me, when I'm working for Amazon, I don't want to be on the darn on phone with your ass, customer fellow customer service agent, for no more than two minutes. So if I'm darn gonna have an explain in detail, Trust me, it's a reason why I'm explaining. Especially if the customer done told me she about fed up. I'm saving you the instance of being cussed out. Because the customers sometimes tell me, can you please explain? Because if I explain to them, honey, I'm not going to explain it as nice. So sometimes I be saving y'all ass from a darn on cussing out. And the agents don't be seeing it that way. 
That's why, honey, anytime the doggone customer mentioned doggone man, that's why they probably mad at me. They probably screamed them doggone phone calls. And as soon as the customer say manager, I'd be like, mm. I sure will. And other times, you know, I try to de-escalate the situation. There's been times where customers have been so pissed off with, and this is why I say sometimes I understand them being mad at the Asian folks. Because you you give you do try to give them a chance to work your situation, and then they fuck your account up even more. You come at me, you immediately demand a supervisor. One person, she didn't even allow me to attempt the situation. She didn't even want me to. She didn't even want me to get her name, and I was like, "Oh no, ma'am. Now, ma'am, at the minimum, I do need to get your name, the address. So it's like, come on now." I, the, the, the agent needs the least darn gonna know your name. I, you you not about to have me cold transfer you over to management. So, once I get them de-escalated enough, they least darn going uh, feel the need to explain a little bit. Then I I I warm transfer the darn going um the call. Now, why is it important to warm transfer? Nobody wants a cold transfer, which is what I've experienced. I know I'm going to get the uh, call come in and it's saying transfer an agent. And I I'm automatically I'm greeted with the customer being pissed off. And then don't make it where the customer darn on don't even know that you transferred them. Because then I'm darn going to copy your darn on contact ID and I'm sending it right on over to management for them to ding your ass. Because it's like, oh, now you darn got me going in this shit blind. You didn't darn going to tell me nothing. I now have, and then it's like, don't let the account also not be authenticated. Because now me and the customer pissed off. I got the darn going to try to re-authenticate the account. Pull up shit. I swear, y'all. These darn on months that I've been at Amazon, it has been hell dick. I have gone through about every situation that you can think of. From a person trying to close out their account. Which is easy. The darn gonna transfer that type of person. We got a special department on that. A uh, little bit more complex when somebody else is calling in in regards to a deceased relative. And it's like, child, the process of trying to get them over to that and filling out the form and stuff. Honey, that, that, that was a complex situation within itself. So those are all the things in a nutshell that Diva Wan has experienced during this darn going, um, peak season. I've done experience some racist call. Oh, matter of fact, like I said, one person just yesterday on the phone talking about their account is under the name nigga. Okay, how you spell it? N-I-G-G-A? Oh, what's the nature of the call? Nick, honey, hang up. Suppress the HMD. Goodbye. Have a nice day. And then you got the next phone call that's a half hour long. Then you get some that's only two, three minutes. Some people just wanted the darn going to check, you know, if their account was okay. You know, you advise them your account is okay. You receive the phishing call. There's no $1,000 iPhone charge on your account. Some people wanted to make sure their credit card purchase went through. Honey, those are the easy ones, honey. You, I wish we could get those more often, honey, just to... Nice folks calling in where the call time ain't no nothing more than two, three minutes. But, you know, that's wishful thinking, honey. Whew. But anyways, that was my experience in a nutshell. What I wish Dirk on Amazon would do is, number one, we need to have some more consistent training. Number two, um, logistics need to Dirk on get a phone um, nine back. Because there would be so many contacts where people be calling in and it goes to, it supposed to be for the logistics department. Anytime you call in the Amazon to complain about UPS, uh, United States Postal Service, FedEx doing something grimy with your packages. One customer called in and said that the, uh, the delivery person went back towards their door and was around there for a few minutes and then eventually uh, came around and put the package at the front door. But there was no instructions on putting the order at the back door. Shit like that. Uh, damaged lawn. Damaged property. Uh, uh, 
postal worker throwing the darn on item on the ground even though it says fragile um, it's raining and you throw the item on the darn on in a mud puddle on purpose like those are issues that needs to be reached out to logistics. But logistics don't call themselves taking away they darn on contact number. So now we got to fill out a form for uh, folks to call them back. It's like, come on now, can we hire some darn on enough logistics folks? Uh, so hell, I darn on work logistics. If you need me to, go ahead and give me some additional training. I darn on work the logistics. I don't know about heavy and bulky services, honey. And you know, someday if I end up getting transferred over, I don't think this is going to be permanent. I'm ready to darn on leave as of March. Um, yesterday, I was ready to quit. Especially after them darn on phone calls. Like I said, eight, five people done hung up on my face. Three people did not even answer. I was so over it. But the day went a whole lot more better whole lot more smooth and i had a longer day today i had a four hour shift today three hours yesterday and then y'all know i have the two very long days towards week you know my eight ten hour days honey but now with this recent shift um bid that i did honey i don't got i don't got a trick for their ass because my behind i be so over it after like two hours i start zoning out so it's like I now set up my darn on schedule in such a way where I can still get my hours where I still have a flexibility of multiple breaks because I just can't be working 10 hours a day and just have two breaks. I need like four breaks in between that 10 hours span, honey. So I will show y'all how I managed to do that for people who are in my situation who be feeling overwhelmed, especially when you can't reach out to nobody in the chat. It's like everybody else seems to be getting their question and answer. I actually have a complex question, which is why I'm asking. Because it be questions that some season reps will know off the top of their head, but somebody like me wouldn't know. I'm trying to think of an example that I can give y'all. Like, early on, like, I did not know how to switch out the darn going, um, the refund. Like, if the refund was accidentally um, given to the person's um, account, as opposed to the um, to the original payment method, how do you switch out the payments? I don't know what the search um, in the darn on proprietary search tool to pull that up. Took me the longest to figure that darn on shit out. Somebody don't eventually told me how to do it. Locked it in my darn on mental rolodex and darn on uh, maintained it ever since. But yeah, y'all, that is basically it. Those are all my, well, just some, because it's so many, I, I can't even, I, I deal with hundreds of phone calls a week. So, it's too many to really darn on, you know, go through just for time purposes. I just wanted to go over some of the most drastic ones that I dealt with um, during this peak season. Now we are out of peak. We can we can start doing peer swaps um, twice a month, self uh, self shift swaps, and all that. I might try to attempt to do that just to darn go and show y'all, give y'all a demonstration video of how that works. Um, so that'll be probably towards like mid January because I have several short days um, during that time. So that'll be real good to to do the shift swap during that type of day um because i think what happens is it adds on to one extra day or whatnot because i don't think you actually switch your shift because they say the hours got to be somewhat simple now for your peers and stuff you got to have manager approval i ain't going to show y'all how to do that i don't know nobody to reach out to in regards to that and i like my shifts that i'm gonna manage to pick out even though I wish I could have darn on picked out a more desirable schedule. Now, this darn on manager I have keeps saying that the shift swap ain't first come, first serve. But how come I end up getting off the phone call eight minutes today, past my time, and I see already that a bulk of the darn on shit's grayed out? Now, I'm trying to figure out what, what would be that. Like, is it is it judging your the times that you can base off of your... And that can't be the case because my metrics for this week is the highest that it's ever been. 
Honey, the customers love me, honey. Even they come to me pissed the fuck off, cussing me the fuck out and everything else. Like, I had one darn on Latina chick, honey. She was on the phone. She done told me, I'm not getting off the phone. And she knew about customer service. She said, I'm going to have your call time run the hell on up, honey. You're going to have to deal with me today. Honey, by the time we got through with her, she was darn on apologetic. She was understanding and everything else and wished me a darn on Merry Christmas, child. That's just the type of customer service I get, honey. Sometimes I match y'all energy. I be petty whopping. Other times, honey, I will flip your whole mood around. You come to me, piss the hell off, and then next thing you know, I done turn your whole deposition around to darn on happy-go-lucky. That's why I try to aim for over 90% of the time. But sometimes some customers just can't be helped. And, you, and, none, of, and none of these situations I take personally. Even the ones that called me the N-word directly, honey, I'm still getting paid. I'm still getting paid regardless. And then, honey, darn on, um, make my darn on life easier. Darn on fuss me out in such a way where it doesn't, because once I've realized that the call handle time don't really mean shit, or, re or do it. The, my manager said it really don't mean shit, as long as you ain't got no, um, you ain't done nothing to violate the the terms like you ain't revealing nobody's credit card information through the chat line or whatnot. So you ain't reveal you ain't on no conference call with the folks' banks and stuff like that. As long as you ain't doing no violation, honey, the call handle time don't really mean much. Um, for us new folks. But still, I try to keep my call handle time as close to the average as possible. My transfer rate, honey. And then this another thing. All these foreigners, my transfer rate would not be nowhere near as high as it is if I didn't have to keep darn going transferring so many foreigners. My my transfer rate would be underneath the darn going average. Over 70% 70, 70 of my transfers be darn on me transferring other people to different departments. And it ends up hitting my metrics. So I wish they get that together as well. Like, I wish they start screening the phone calls and see that, you know, when it's um, other agents asking us to transfer them, that shouldn't affect our darn on metrics. So I wish they get that together as well. Um, I wish there is a way where customers can choose in certain instances uh, what delivery drivers um, they want for their darn gone items, even if they have to pay a little bit more. Some customers, I don't think, wouldn't mind paying a little bit more, especially if they be having notorious known issues with certain darn gone drivers. Because I be hearing some folks having issues with their particular UPS. Other folks be having issues with um, the United States Postal Service and whatnot. And then they will swear the other one is the best thing since sliced bread. So it's like, I wish customers had a little bit more leeway on that. Um, relating to my darn on workers in the factory, this is a sacrifice that customers have to make. I wish we could forego the two-day guarantee shipping for nearly every item um, for a lot of stuff. Because I watch a person called Sheila's Road Travels. I will leave her information down below. And how much they have to do in those factories, how much they have to package in a short amount of time is rather unrealistic. And then the, uh, and then sometimes the customers be like, why in the hell did my plywood was boxed in the same container as my shampoo? Because the workers are so stressed out, so overworked, and they have to pull the boxes. They get the whole big crates and stuff, and they have to meet a quota. They got the Hit the clock, hit the clock, hit the clock. Boom, 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 boom. They got to move so fast in that factory that sometimes, you know, rationale goes out the window. Like, when you have to darn on meet your quota, sometimes common sense goes out the window thinking like, okay, if this is a glass bottle of, you know, something that is like hyaluronic acid, something that can't be returned, I might, if I'm going to put it in this darn going package with supply tools, 
you know, a hammer or a drill. Let me darn gonna put bubble wrap around this glass item so the other one don't knock up against it. And then the item come partially shattered and spilled liquid. Those are the two items that we cannot return under any circumstances. That's the one thing that would get you a returnless refund is if the item comes shattered where it can cause damage and you got liquid. Matter of fact, I dealt with a customer today. She had two items that was under two different order numbers, but somehow they came in the same shipment. Um, the Tide was wrapped up, but the drain cleaner, which is toxic, was not wrapped up. And that was the item that spilled out, and it was spilled all over the Tide container. Now, even though the Tide container wasn't spilled, that item had to be refunded as well. Because, once again, you have a darn on high alkaline product that can cause damage if somebody touch it with their bare hand. So, by default, I had to darn on automatically refund both items. Now, the thing is this. If the darn on workers wasn't stressed out so much, if they had more leniency over there in the darn on factories, um, if we ease up off of the darn on two-day shipping, because another thing with items being shipped out so fast, when customers have buyer's remorse, and I touched on this in my last video, Sometimes within over a half hour, you think, oh, it's just been a half hour. I can go ahead and cancel this out. You now stressed out because you can't cancel the order. I can't cancel the order because it's already in advanced shipping stages because Amazon really moves just that fast. The second that you click, darn on ding, some items are already being taken off within a matter of two minutes flat. It's already packaged and wrapped up and ready to be picked up on the truck within a half hour. And the downside to that is what happens when the customer now wants to doggone uh, cancel the item. Now they subject to doggone have to wait to the item of wise and we have to go through a whole return process. And then another thing and we're going to close this on out. Transparency with third party items. I had a customer today who was pissed off because one of her three items I could not process a, a pickup for because it was a third party item. Come and find out the third party seller was able to darn on provide a UPS uh, return label. Uh, the customer got to the point where she said, fucking I take the items to the UPS for the two items that were fulfilled and sold by Amazon. So... In the midst of that, we was able to get her to get all three of them items returned and she'll get a refund on, on the first scan. Now, the thing is, what caused her to be so irritated is, I don't think half the time the customers don't know when they're purchasing third-party items because they'd be so confused, be like, well, any other time I'm able to return this item to Kohl's, why am I not able to return this item to Kohl's? And then we got to go into f talking about why is it third party and all this, that, third. So I wish they would be more transparent and highlight. They, they, because they be sh showing the soul and fulfilled by these teeny tiny print. No, we need to darn on emphasize that, especially at checkout. And be like, uh, this is third party. We need, you know, bright color brackets and darn on tell the customer, this is, you know, this particular seller's information like the seller needs to be able to provide specific return instructions if they are applicable some don't re uh, require some don't do returns some will probably refund you the item without a return that needs to be highlighted both during the beginning of the process and during checkout they need to know off the bat whether this is an amazon fulfilled based product so I want them to get that together as well. So my main issues with them is I want them to get the darn gone system right because my darn gone shit should not be going slow as it be going um, and I got the fastest internet in my darn gone city. 400 darn gone um, MPS darn gone speed. There should be no reason why my shit's going like dial up sometimes. I need them to get their systems right. I need them to be more transparent with the third party seller. Um, the A to Z claim process, um, there needs to be some more transparency on how that works. Like, 
you know, on both the customer's end and on the agent's end, how that how we are able to snatch the funds and guarantee that they will get a refund when the customer, I mean, when the uh, seller is not being responsive. Because honestly, I do not know what happens if the darn going seller, like, how, how do we go by snatching the funds away from the seller? Like, I, I need some more transparency with that, how the A to Z claim works. What else? I wish there was a way to flag calls for the, you know, the prank phone calls and stuff to put them on alert. But I think Amazon is so greedy, they just don't give a damn. It's like, well, honey, this ain't, this person might be a, cup, a customer someday. We don't want to flag the number out. Okay. But yeah, y'all, that is basically my whole spill in a nutshell. That's my, you know, entire ordeal. I'm darn on out of breath, winded, have not had nothing today except for a flapjack meal from Kodak Cakes. So I got my protein and stuff, but honey, this was breakfast time. It's now darn on 8 o'clock at night. Let me go ahead and fix me some stuff in this darn on air fryer and call it a night. So happy New Year's. We will not be doing another video until 2022. If y'all have any additional questions, comments, Y'all know what to do. Leave it down below. The next video will not be as long. It's just going to be a brief video showing y'all my schedule and how the scheduling process works with Amazon. That would be a quick 10 to 13 minute video. But that is it, y'all. But if y'all have any other stuff y'all want me to go over during my tenure here, definitely darn gone. Feel free to speak up now. Uh, well, depending on when you're watching this, you know, before March comes around because March, Diva Wan is looking to get back to doing my aesthetics and then we'll be switching over and showcasing y'all uh, my journey getting back into a physical spot, this, that, and the third. Um, but until then, we're going to be on this Amazon journey. So that is it, y'all. Feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And Diva Wan will see y'all soon with more videos. Mwah.